Hey there everybody, I'm Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. I've had a lot of people asking for a video on how to draw hands, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, brace yourselves for a video that's not going to be uh, real easy to follow. I think, um, you know, drawing hands is maybe the most challenging, uh, uh, or certainly one of the most challenging things, uh, and there's no magical, simple way uh, to teach it. I think people like kind of would like to have, you know, sh show me th a, a general technique for drawing all hands all the time. And uh, I certainly have not found anything like that. I find that you have to learn to uh, draw the hand in a great variety of positions uh, and almost memorize different techniques for drawing different, um, you know, poses of the hand. Uh, so see if you can follow along with this. We're going to begin with this um, kind of boxy shape, although you'll notice that it comes off a little bit. Uh, it's got a little bit of an angle over here on one side. And this is going to help us get the basic shape of a clenched fist. Um, notice uh, that this line here is longer than the distance from here to here, so it's kind of sloping down a little. In fact, uh, I might make that slope down even more. Now we're going to make a second line that is a little closer to the top than to the bottom, and this is going to show us where to put the fingers eventually. Um, I think we should go ahead and try to get the thumb in here. Uh, it comes off on this side uh, a little bit of a triangle-like shape, except that when it reaches close to here, to that first line, that's when it's going to cut across and and give us the shape of the thumb, which is kind of closing in on top of the fingers, holding um, all of the fingers in place. Notice that uh, when you look at that first line we drew, the thumb is more above that line than below. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little uh, line for the knuckle there. Maybe a few wrinkles back here. Now it's time to get to the tricky part of drawing each one of the fingers. Um, I think what I'm going to begin with is find a, a, a point between these two uh, sides. This point right here is going to help me kind of divide this into two uh, parts, more or less equal, although I guess this part over here uh, is uh, going to at first look smaller than this part over here. And what I'm going to do now is draw a curving line for the knuckles, all the way down from this point down towards this point. This is going to help us because the, the knuckles sort of cascade almost across the hand uh, when it's put into a fist shape like this. And then you can kind of get these fanning lines that... Uh, uh, delineate each one of the fingers. Notice as you get down to the pinky, as we are all aware, the pinky is the smallest of the fingers, and so the distance between these two lines needs to be uh, smaller. And it is, like I said, fanning out. It's sort of coming in at an angle, whereas here it's, it's more straight up and down. And notice also that the, the bottom edge of the knuckles is, is kind of um, tipping past that first line that we drew. Maybe get another wrinkle or two back here as the skin folds in. Um, can be very tricky, I find, I wonder if anyone else finds this, to get the shape of the knuckles across here right. Um, you can't just follow straight across that line. It kind of comes up and you get this waving effect uh, as each uh, of the, particularly the middle two knuckles, as they sort of bulge out. And I find that often this second knuckle is the one that's most prominent. Then coming down here to kind of finish things off, um, the, the flesh folding in, sort of breaking the bottom of the palm into two parts. You can get uh, the rest coming off the bottom here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, all of these things are, are really quite subtle, the relationships between each part of the finger. I've come up with my technique uh, for drawing a, a closed fist. I'm sure uh, other artists come up with their own. 
Um, but this, you know, hopefully if you've been struggling as I often do to draw a nice clenched fist, this will give you a nice system for doing that. I'm going to kick it into time lapse to just uh, use my black colored pencil to do final lines here, and then we'll move on, move on to drawing the other hand over here. <laughs> Okay, so uh, there you have it, um, my uh, attempt at drawing a clenched fist. Of course, you can see the shading adds a lot to uh, the sense of three-dimensionality, but a lot of times, you know, you're drawing a hand from a distance, um, you're not going to need to do all this shading. I just thought I'd throw that in there for fun. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the other hand here. This is going to be a much more feminine hand. And um, uh, maybe I should go ahead and sort of refocus the camera so that I'm zooming in on that a little more. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be a much more feminine looking hand, and um, it's uh, just as tricky in a lot of ways as the uh, closed fist. This one's going to be a much more open hand. Um, I'm going to begin by drawing, uh, an, again, a sort of a boxy shape, uh, a little hard to describe. This is going to be um, most of the palm of the hand. And uh, the way I'm drawing it, it's sort of leaning to one side. That's not necessary. You could have this straight up and down if you wanted to, as long as all the lines uh, are uh, at the proper angles as you redraw everything. Um, but uh, getting this uh, into uh, the proper shape, and make sure you have a curved, curving line down here. This is where all the fingers are going to come from. Um, we're going to draw a top to this. It almost to me it looks a little look like the roof of a house, the way this comes back, and this is going to be the base of the uh, palm. The hand is actually reaching down uh, the way I'm drawing it in this position, so it's going to be kind of the opposite of what we drew a moment ago. Once you've got that shape in place, you can move on to drawing uh, the fingers, and um, this is going to be a bit tricky. I'm going to start by drawing the pinky coming down off this side of the hand, more or less straight up and down. And once you've got that in place, uh, you can uh, draw the pointer finger. Now notice that this line coming at this angle, the pointer finger is coming off just a little bit, it's pointing in just a slightly different direction. And um, although the finger uh, breaks into three joints, uh, or divides itself into three joints, I find that when, the, when people are drawing a feminine hand, they don't want to get into the details of drawing each one of those individual joints. And more often than not, they'll sort of have it break into what appears to be just two. Now, uh, looking at these two, you can make a kind of a curving line if you want to. I'm kind of down near the end, uh, the bottom of my... Let me refocus the camera. Sorry about this. Okay, so uh, you can draw a curving line here, and then a second uh, curving line coming off the pinky. And the two of them are sort of intersecting right about here, a little closer to the uh, pointer finger. Uh, and at this point, that's where you can uh, go ahead and put that pointer finger in there. Again, I'm sort of breaking it into uh, two parts rather than three. I mean, you know, of course, if you're drawing an absolutely realistic hand, you're going to have to draw each one of those individual joints. But I'm kind of trying to show you here a more of an, uh, an elegant, uh, slightly stylized way of drawing a female hand, which you see a lot in uh, comics or even fine art, uh, this way of wanting the hand to look very elegant. Uh, notice that this uh, finger is just a little shorter uh, than the one next to it. We've got these in place. We can uh, go ahead and start to put the thumb in. Um, the thumb is going to be coming off from this point and curving outward like that. So I'm going to just get a curving line like this. And then at this point, we can get the other part of the thumb 
um, it can be tricky to know how long to make the thumb. I think in this particular pose it's not uh, much longer, the distance here is not much longer than that of the pinky, but you're not, this is not, this area right here is not the whole thumb, as you're going to see it, it curves back, or continues back here, and then this uh, indication, there we go, indication of the uh, base of the thumb curves back here until it trails off right around that first line that we drew there. And yeah, we're getting close to having everything in place that we need. This is I'm not going to be shading this one in to the degree that I did the other one. Uh, like I said, this is more sort of stylized. Uh, I'm going to begin to draw the um, wrist, uh, the top of that sort of the roof of the house, I guess I was calling it. Uh, that's where the lines of the wrist are going to come off. Uh, for the female hand, you want the wrist to not be too thick, not too... Uh, masculine looking. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and uh, do some time lapse for uh, adding the final lines. You're not going to see nearly as much shading though, so uh, hopefully we'll be done with this pretty quickly. Okay, well there you have it, my uh, little video on drawing the human hand. Consider this the first of many videos on this subject. Uh, of course, you have to study the anatomy of the human hand, um, uh, but also it doesn't hurt to have little tricks like these that I showed you here for getting the lines in the right place. Um, let me go ahead and thank everyone who has bought Brody's Ghost, my graphic novel series from Dark Horse. Uh, this is now available as an e-book, so if you have an iPad or uh, something like that and you want to read it in e-book form, big thanks to you for getting it that way at the iTunes store or, or hopefully other uh, such places. Uh, also, big thanks to anyone who gets Mickey Falls, uh, my graphic novel series from HarperCollins. Uh, but let's go ahead and lay the pencil down. I do uh, really greatly appreciate you guys watching my videos. Um, one thing you can do for me, if even if you can't, uh, you know, buy any of my books or anything that you can help me out, is by, uh, um, you know, embedding uh, this video and others uh, on your Facebook or different places like that. That helps me sort of spread the word about my videos, getting new people watching them and so forth. Um, but let's go ahead and end the video. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you found it useful. And I'll be back with another one real soon.